Hello everyone, owning neither a crystal ball nor a pair of sandals, I'm rarely given to making predictions. However, this time I'm willing to break tradition by predicting that shortly after the end of spring 2018, it'll be impossible to find a DCS multiplayer server where it isn't constantly pissing rain like some kind of Irish beach holiday. That is, of course, until a vocal minority of you begin demanding accumulating snow and pilot sunburn. Let's change the weather for a moment and introduce you to the DCS FA-18. This is my first look in flight. What you see in this video is an alpha state, so everything is subject to change. I would also like to extend my thanks to Matt and all the team at Eagle Dynamics for allowing me the opportunity to share this with you. As is tradition, let's get inside the cockpit and take a look around. And as is tradition for Eagle Dynamics, the cockpit looks absolutely magnificent. This is what a salesman would refer to as a previously loved or nearly new Hornet. The little scratches and worn surfaces add to the level of depth and immersion, but for me the Prince Albert on the BDSM midget are the MFCDs. Looking at them one can imagine a slovenly crew chief idly wiping the remnants of his hot dog from his face with an oil coated rag, reaching down into his overalls to scratch his latest catch, and then combining his newly created ecosystem all over the MFCDs. Buttons and knobs giggity have a satisfying resonating click which gives them a sense of weight. Bitching Betty has developed a distinctly Engine southern drawl, so she'll have to be called Moaning Mary Lou. Left. Startup is quite involved, obviously not to the same level as the A10C, where you've probably picked baby names before the startup has finished. It will still take you a few minutes, and there is a correct procedure to get everything going that you can't really deviate from. You can, of course, press Windows key and home, but to my mind, that's missing out on something. It's like going to an orgy and having a wank in the corner. With all systems running, the INS aligned, and bingo set, it's time to taxi out and take off. The F-18 has nose wheel steering, so taxiing is a doddle. As anybody who's ever been on a server with me will know, the important thing is to remember to turn off nose wheel steering when you're lined up on the runway. On the takeoff roll, the F-18 accelerates like a rocket. The acceleration on almost naked F-18 on full afterburner is rapid and beguilingly smooth. There's no need to yank on the stick like some kind of deviant on the vinegar strokes. The aircraft will unstick itself with very little assistance when it's ready. Once airborne, the acceleration is rapid up to about Mach 1. Incidentally, the aircraft has a top speed of Mach 1.8. The agility and controllability of the F-18 are frightening. I say frightening because I know on release day servers are going to be heavily infected with dipshits doing things like this, with the exception that most of these dipshits won't have the wherewithal to reach the opposite end of the runway. If you're not already the proud owner of a throbbing semi, check out the wing flex. Isn't that just a thing of beauty? As is usual with US aircraft design, visibility is king. The bubble canopy combined with keeping your eye on the sensors and your head on the swivel should at least in theory in hostile territory prevent you from becoming a sudden impromptu shower of aluminium rain. The FA-18C has three digital cockpit displays, so sensor deprivation should not be an issue. The FA-18 has a service ceiling of 15,000 meters. For our brothers in the US, that's 50,000 of those things you call shoes or feet or whatever they are. However, if you really want to get a handle of what the FA-18 can do, I suggest you get down on the deck. There's nothing like that feeling of trees, telegraph poles and goats whizzing past your cockpit at over 500 knots. It's important to remember that the sensors and warning systems are not there to nag and cajole you like a possessive partner who has just found your adult cinema collection. They're there to keep you alive. And most importantly, they're there to protect an expensive and complex piece of military hardware from the reckless actions of an overconfident gobshite. This rather neatly segues me into the flight model. First of all, a quick disclaimer. I have never flown the F-A-18C or any other military aircraft. So I suggest you do the following. Visit my Cliffs of Dover video, take a truckload of salt from the comments, and apply as necessary to the following statements. The feedback from the flight model feels, although that's not really the correct word, amazing. This is a modern fly-by-wire, so you're not going to get that scrotum flapping in the wind feeling you get from warbirds. When the fly-by-wire kicks in, it's not obtrusive. Crucially, it feels like it's there to protect you from yourself. If you're an exclusive Warbird or 50s flyer, fly-by-wire is going to feel somewhat on rails. But I think this one strikes a perfect balance. As I said at the very beginning of the video, the aircraft is still in alpha state, and there is still some fine-tuning to be made to the flight model. Overall, my impression is extremely satisfying and immersive. No first flight video is complete without a horribly embarrassing attempt at landing the damn thing. However, while I pucker my sphincter like a kissing fish, I would like to discuss some final thoughts. This is the first of a few videos covering the pre-alpha of the DCS FA-18C. 
In the next video I'll delve into the systems currently available and in a further video I'll move on to weapons. People are going to ask if they should purchase and it's not a question that's easy to answer because it depends on you and your personality type. My advice as always is take a look at all of the available information. If you are like me and what's available on release is enough to make and keep you happy for a long time, then it's an unreserved go for it. If you are a completionist and prefer to have everything 100% finished, then wait until it comes out of beta. There is absolutely nothing wrong with either position as long as one makes an informed choice and manages one's expectations. By way of a brief example, I'm a guy who enjoys the systems almost as much as I enjoy flight. What really impresses me about this Alpha from a general flight perspective is, from the moment I turned on the battery, until the atrocity of a landing you're just about to witness, all the systems worked and communicated with each other. In my next video I'll be taking you on a small tour of a little part of the upcoming Straits of Hormuz map, or for the geographically challenged the Persian Gulf map. I'm keeping them all separate because I know how easy it is for flight simmers to become excited and overwhelmed. I also know how that excitement can lead to them reaching for the pitchforks particularly when the things told to them by the little bunnies in their heads turn out not to be true. I will leave you with one final prediction. The FA-18C is going to be huge for DCS. This is going to be bigger than the A-10C ever was and is going to lead to a vast influx of newcomers. The DCS community has always been generous with their time and helpful, particularly when it comes to helping newbies. As irritating as the same question repeated a hundred times can be, we've got to resist the temptation of becoming a read the fucking manual Google as your friends search the forum autists. In other words, we've got to remember where we came from and try to preserve as much of that as possible. Many of you are probably wondering what I think of the F-18 so far. Let me put it this way, if it was a lady I'd marry it, if it was a guy I'd turn gay. All that's left to say is, I thank you very much for watching, please don't forget to dislike or tell me to go fuck myself below.